My name is Leonard Kozianski. I'm an artist. Welcome to my studio. Uh, my, like I said, my name's Leonard Kozianski. My uh, friends and family all know me as Rusty. Uh, but yeah, I'm an artist and I work in the studio every day. And I'd like to talk to you today about a couple of things. Okay, I want to talk to you about a painting that I did in 2017. And, uh, and at the end, uh, for all you smarties out there, we'll have a little art quiz. See how, how sharp you are in, in terms of your art knowledge. Okay? And, uh, and so that'll be fun. And something to look forward to. Uh, and like I said, I'll talk about this art painting and how I, I painted it and why I painted it. And what, 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 what? Oh, I hear you. Okay, you don't need to shout at your computer screens. I hear you. I hear you. And I mean, I'm walking down Main Street here in Annapolis. And, and a couple of you subscribers, you run up to me. And you say, Rusty, what about a book club? A book club? A book club? Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, okay. If we have time, at the end, uh, we'll maybe do a little book club. Okay, but first, let's talk about a painting. Okay, so here's the painting. It's called On the Corner, Oil on Canvas, 42 by 26. It's a painting about this town I live in. And, and so this painting is kind of like about the different kinds of lights and the different kind of people and kind of in these houses and, and the illumination that creates this atmosphere that they live in in this modern world. And so how did this painting begin? Well, it began like most of my paintings in a sketchbook with a drawing, about, about a five by eight inch drawing, pen and ink. And then when I have that drawing that I like, uh, then I put a pencil grid over it, and I blow it up to a, a large canvas. And so the grid helps me to, to blow it up. And, and I blow it up using vine charcoal. Here you can see vine charcoal used to make the drawing. And then I go over that vine charcoal with ink, a water-based ink, that I can then uh, glaze or, or I can tone the canvas and not have the ink dissolve. And so here's the, uh, the inked-in composition after I've you know inked in the vine charcoal drawing and and you can see in the foreground there's that car and and so and I didn't realize it at first but that would become a problem okay so here's the painting kind of just getting started maybe a quarter of the way through and I've you know blocked in the lights with white and and the the, the browns with the dark brown the dark colors with the dark brown and I'm beginning to block in some of the colors, and the painting's really bothering me. It's really upsetting me. I'm having a hard time working on it because it just seems kind of confusing. Well, why? Because it is confusing. You know, what's this painting all about? And I had to make up my mind. Was it going to be about the cars, or was it going to be about the people in the windows? Because it wasn't, a, being about both wasn't working out too well. And that happens with paintings. You know, we can't be afraid to make major changes to some project we're working on. OK, we don't want to let our egos get too wrapped up in what we're doing so that we're afraid to to make changes. And so, you know, I had to get rid of the cars, but that doesn't mean I'm going to get rid of them permanently. I may redo this painting again. Here's the painting about three quarters of the way finished. The cars are gone. It's about the people in the windows and the light that's illuminating their lives and the rooms that they're in. This is the finished painting. Now the main focus of interest is that middle ground, that sort of foreground, middle ground area where we're looking into those three different windows. And on the left, there's this woman, a naked woman, looking at herself in a mirror. So sort of a middle-aged woman looking at herself in a mirror, looking at her naked body in a mirror. That's kind of a very erotic kind of a pose, a kind of an image. And then across the street, there's this woman washing dishes. Now, to me, there's nothing less sexy than washing dishes, okay? So here you have the very sexy and erotic on the left side, and then across the road, it's very unsexy, unerotic on the right side. Uh, but in her house, you've got this teenage child watching TV or, or playing a video game. So, uh, you know, what a contrast between the two different kinds of light. That, that warm light, the woman in the kitchen with that, that warm incandescent light pouring out onto the street. And then that child or that, that teenager with that 
kind of blue light that, you know, TVs, monitors, they give off that kind of like blue, that blue purpley kind of light that's really weird and really distorts colors. And it's kind of, but, you know, it's sort of entertainment light. And uh, so here are those two different kinds of light. And if we walk down the street at night, we can see, you know, some windows illuminated by warm incandescent lights, very inviting. And then some that are illuminated by that kind of that cold, flickery blue light. Uh, and we can tell, know that those people are watching TV or working on their computers. And speaking of contrasts, uh, you know, that light pouring out onto the sidewalk. How was I going to create not just the color, but the texture of that and, and have it be kind of like a glowy color? Well, the first thing I had to do was underpaint it with white and then glaze the colors over the top of that. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that technique, that glaze technique, because I had to use that technique when doing the street light. Okay, so you got, how am I going to make those street light, that street light look like it's illuminated, like it's actually lit up? Well, the way I had to do it was first underpaint it with a pure white. And here, this is a photograph, not a very good photograph, but here it is early on where that, that white, with a white underpainting, and it, it's actually kind of bumpy. It's a textured white, and I let that dry. And, you know, here you can see this is how I do it. You know, I'm just putting these little dabs, these little blobs of white paint down to create the white underpainting and to create the texture. And then when that's dry, then I can glaze the color that I want over the top of it. And here I am glazing with these oranges. I'm glazing this reddish orange over those oranges. And then I can even wipe it down a little bit with my finger to bring out the texture. And and in here, uh, here is the, uh, I'm using blue. Okay, blue for the water. And I underpaint the water with a very textured white to try to mimic the, the textured quality of water. Then I can go over it with a rag to kind of wipe the tops of the of the paint strokes to get, bring out some of the texture so that it has a kind of a glowy quality as well as the texture that I'm after. And so that was how I was able to do this street light. And I was real happy with it because in the painting, the street light really does seem to be lit up. And so right here we have the middle ground. And, you know, you've got that stained glass, another different kind of light. And Again, I underpainted that with white and then put glazes over the top of that to, to mimic the stained glass, the character of stained glass. And up above, there's that couple and they're kissing. Okay. And down below, what is that in the window? There's a dog looking up at them, wondering what's going on. And so it's an interesting combination of symbols. You know, love is very sublime, but, you know, kissing is kind of like an animal activity. And so pairing kissing with an animal down below seemed like a, a, a good symbolic pair to have, you know, love being very sublime, but, but kissing is kind of like an animal thing. And, and then there on the right, you know, there we're looking in the window and there's someone standing there. They're, are they talking? Are they looking at something? And, and there's some plants, ha plant hanging in the window. And then there's another, a street light, another kind of light, Okay, so we have a traffic light and a street light and incandescent light and TV light. And then in the background, we have moonlight. And, and there's that boat coming up the, the, the waterway. And it's across the bay, another town. We can see the church and some of the buildings illuminated and the, and the moon rising above that. Okay, so, you know, different, all of these different kinds of lights that, that illuminate our world you know, traffic lights and street lights and incandescent light and TV light, and, and they create different atmospheres, you know, and, and people, and the people in those rooms, they create different atmospheres, you know, a very sexy atmosphere, a very loving atmosphere, uh, washing dishes, very unsexy, watching TV, being entertained uh, versus being kind of bored, all these different activities and different lights, all this richness of suburban life. You know, some people think that suburban life is boring. It is so not boring. It's very rich. Like I said, I'm in a running group, and we run every morning. And I don't know why I'm in this running group, because all these guys in this running group, they're all really rich, like these wealthy developers and CEOs and lobbyists. And, and I'm the starving artist. 
<laughs> and so one morning, you know, after our run, uh, they're all sitting around and, you know, we even have the mayor of the city of Annapolis in our running group. And, and he had been on this junket over to Northern Europe and this political junket. And, and so he's back there, he's talking about his trip and how he saw this painting. And he described this painting, the girl with the pearl earring. And everybody in the group knew which painting he was talking about. And, you know, these guys are very well educated. Some of them are Ivy League educated. And, but none of them knew who painted this picture. You know, I asked around. Nobody knew the artist's name. I was the only one who knew the artist's name. So that's our quiz. That's our little art quiz for today for all of you smarties out there. Who is the artist who painted this famous picture? And I don't want just the last name. I want the first name and the last name spelled correctly. Okay, so you write it down on a piece of paper or push pause and, and write it in the comments section down below. And don't peek at anybody else's answer. And you have five seconds to come up with the answer. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, pencils down. Okay, everybody now hold up your answer so that everybody can see. Okay, let's hold up our answers so that everybody can see the correct answer. Did you get it right? Okay, well that's our art quiz for today. So if you liked art quizzes, well then please be sure to subscribe and, and hit the like button and, and write a comment and share it with your friends and maybe even hit that little bell up above, that, that little notification bell. Uh, and then I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll include more of these little art quizzes in upcoming videos. Okay? Um, what, what do you, like I said, stop shouting at the screen. I can hear you. Book club, book club, book club. <laughs> okay, okay, book club. Well, if we're going to have a book club, then you're going to read what I'm reading. Tom Jones by Henry Fielding. One of the first novels ever written. It's not an easy read. It was written in the 1750s, and his sentence structure is very 1750s. And the book is hysterical. Uh, and it's very insightful. But it's long. But the chapters are short. But, you know, the, the lang you, you really have to spend, sometimes you have to spend a little time with the language and get used to it. And if you read it before going to bed, it's going to put you right to sleep. And you're going to miss half the jokes. <laughs> so I recommend reading it when you're alert. Only read a few chapters at a time, though they're short chapters. And, and you'll be able to, to pick up his humor. And uh, it's a great book. It really is. Uh, and the hero, Tom Jones, he's a real guy guy. Okay, So you guys out there, you're going to like this book. And you gals out there that like guys, you're going to like this book too. Uh, so that's our book club selection. And if you, so if you want me doing these, these book club-y kind of things, then you be sure to subscribe and you be sure to write a comment. I read all the comments and I, I, I comment on your comments and I really appreciate it. Like I said, I don't make any money off of this. You know, all the encouragement for doing these videos comes from you, your subscriptions, your comments, your shares, your likes. That makes a big, huge difference, okay? Now, maybe someday, well, YouTube says if I get a 1,000 subscribers, they'll start to pay me something, like, you know, $5 a month, <laughs> okay? So, uh, but, you know, just please help me out there. And, and I will see you all next time. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, like, and share. And don't forget to ring the bell.